Hello and welcome to this video. Introduction to Storage OS, Installation and Setup with myself, James Spurin, Product Evangelist for Storage OS. We're going to quickly cover a number of topics. We start with the setup process. We'll talk about the installation prerequisites, covering the setup and configuration of ETCD. We'll then install and configure Storage OS. Next up is licenses. You can follow this tutorial as it is and use Storage OS for 24 hours unlicensed. However, it only takes a few moments to sign up either for the free edition or the enterprise. Once this is done, you can continue to use the cluster as desired. We'll quickly step through the licensing process. Next, we'll take a look at some of the components installed, and in particular, the Storage OS storage class, the CSI engine at the heart of Storage OS. We're then going to make use of Storage OS, creating and consuming persistent volumes. Lastly, we'll test failover and high availability by deleting some pods and confirming that our data is persistent and highly available. All of the resources we've used here are available at the following URL. I very much hope that you try Storage OS, and in the same way I'm showing in this video, you can use these resources yourself on your own Kubernetes or OpenShift cluster. As part of the installation process, we require EDCD as a distributed key value data store for the information stored and used by Storage OS. For production purposes, we recommend that this is a standalone cluster, but for development and testing and evaluation, you can use a convenient setup that we're going to go through here. Let's take a look at the setup process. I'm here in my terminal and I have the resources downloaded. And quite simply for this, we have a free node Kubernetes cluster. The first script that we're going to run will set up the etcd cluster for us across all of our nodes using the etcd operator. So let's run the first script. And with that, we have an etcd cluster running across all of our nodes. Listed on the output is the endpoint that should be used for etcd access and we'll be referencing this during our Storage OS configuration. Next, we're going to install Storage OS via the Storage OS operator. We're going to configure credentials and we'll set up a Storage OS cluster. If you wish to change the version of Storage OS installed, edit this script and change the version line. I'm just going to run this. And as quick as that, we've installed Storage OS. Next, we're going to configure the credentials that will be used for Storage OS. If you execute the third script, you can see that this has created a standard Kubernetes secret that we use for the Storage OS credentials. In this example, all of these are using the entry of Storage OS. We can quickly see this here. We're now going to set up the Storage OS cluster. This example here uses the Storage OS operator. It's pretty straightforward, and we just need to provide the version of Storage OS and the etcd endpoint from step one. Lastly, we have a convenient script that will just wait and make sure every Storage OS component is running as expected. Beautiful. Okay, so we're good to go. Okay, so as mentioned previously, you can of course start using the Storage OS cluster right now, but without licensing, it's only going to function for 24 hours. We can do this very quickly as follows. If we go back to our terminal, and what we're going to do is use the convenient kubectl port forwarding to forward the UI interface to our local system. Okay, and with that in place, in a browser, we can browse to localhost colon 5705. 
And if you recall, we set the credentials as storage OS. So we use the username and password of storage OS for both. And at this point, upon logging in, we've got this warning at the top, just asking us to license. If we just click the prompt here and scroll down, I'm gonna choose developer edition for now. And I'm gonna fill in my information here. And after agreeing to the terms and conditions, click register. You'll receive an email asking you to verify your account. And at this point, I'm going to select the developer edition. And I fill in my information here. And after doing so, I've registered the developer account within my profile. If we now go back and we sign in to our storage OS account. And you can see there, successfully logged in, free cluster license added. Back to our terminal and we can press Control C here. And with that complete, we're ready to talk about the storage OS storage class. Storage OS has installed the CSI interface. We're going to have a separate video on how these can be used for different storage profiles, availability and encryption. But for now, we'll see that we have a default storage class called FAST. And you can see there, this is a CSI provisioner. So we've got csi.storageos.com and that has the name of fast. With all of this in place, we're going to take a look at using storage OS persistent volumes with Kubernetes. We start with the creation of a persistent volume claim. For those of you familiar with Kubernetes, you may be used to creating both a persistent volume and a persistent volume claim. With Storage OS, the persistent volume creation is automatically handled as part of the claim. This example is consistent with what you would expect to do for any kind of persistent volume claim. The only difference is the use of the Storage OS CSI driver via the storage class name entry. If we can check, we can now see that we have a PVC and PV, both sharing the same UUID. Let's make use of this with a Kubernetes stateful set, which is the recommended component for persistent workloads. We'll use the base Ubuntu image and we'll pass our persistent volume claim to mount a slash data. Okay, so you can see there that we're actually using the Ubuntu image. Quite simply, with this one, we're just telling it to sleep for infinity. And we have the persistent volume claim there being mounted as slash data. If we now check all of the running components for this, we have our stateful set called Ubuntu, and that's running for around about 32 seconds there which in turn has created the Ubuntu Zero pod. And that's just one second later there, 33 seconds. And of course we have our PV and our PVC. Let's access the pod and take a look. Okay, so now we're in the Ubuntu dash zero pod. And if we have a look at slash data, we can see our persistent volume mounted. Let's write some data to this. Okay, great. And if we just do an MD5 sum on this. Okay, we can actually see that that starts with EE9D and ends with 7310. Okay, and if we type exit, to exit out of this. And what we're going to do now is delete the running pod. Okay, so that has now been deleted. 
And if we check again, note the difference in time between the stateful set and the pod. And now, if we access Ubuntu 0 again, and with this, at any point, we can confirm that our data still exists. Now this pod could have been created on any node in the cluster and the data as we've actually shown here would have been available owing to the persistent storage provided by Storage OS. Okay, so that's all. Thanks for your time watching this and as a next step, please take a look either at our video on Storage OS storage classes and how these can be used for different classes of availability and features or our use cases. If you're wishing to pursue the use of Storage OS further, please reach out to myself or our team, and we'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have.